Hello and welcome to Old School Garage. My name is Nicholas and today I'm going to be well, attempting to start the L1000 here and or the 1971 now that I got two. But I'm going to be trying to start this guy today. I've done a ton of work. That's why I haven't posted in almost a month now. I'm creeping up on that. But I've been doing a ton of work, stuff that I felt didn't necessarily need to be on video, but I could just do a quick overview and you'd get the, the picture. So I've basically reworked the battery box. I've completely cleaned up the electric to a good point to where I can at least put batteries on the truck and start to problem solve little things here and there. Pretty much everything was left in place um, on this truck because it was running when it was set up back in the late 90s. So it hasn't run since probably like 98, somewhere around there. So just over 25 years. And today we are going to be hooking the batteries up for the first time and seeing if she'll crank over. But let's review the work that I've done before we get started on that so you can kind of get a picture of where my head's at and everything that I've been working on on this truck. Now, before I get started with this, I'd like to say a special thank you to ProTech Powder Coating for sponsoring my channel. If you have any powder coating needs, any ceramic coating needs, anything like that, please reach out to Frank with ProTech Powder Coating and uh, tell them that I sent you and they will help you out there. All right, so the first thing up that I'm gonna talk about that I have done some work on off camera is the turbocharger. So for the turbocharger, you have your inlet tube right here. You got your outlet from the oil cooler. I have gone ahead and I've primed this completely so that there's fresh oil in here ready to go into the turbocharger when it starts. I have also fed oil in through here and opened this guy up so that I can check to make sure I'm getting proper oil flow through the turbo. As I sit here and I spin it, and as you can see, it is moving freely, so we don't have a frozen turbo, but I just fed fresh oil, 30 weight oil, down in through this guy and checked to make sure I was getting oil at the bottom end here. Now I did also keep pushing fresh oil through it until I got to a point where there was no black oil coming out the bottom of it. The oil that came out of this engine was very black. I didn't do an oil change, but I did change the filter here just to put a new filter on. I did pre-fill it um, just to give me a good oil prime or get close to an oil prime uh, quickly because this is the first start in a while. Now here is the oil filter that was in it. And it is black, full of carbon, but it is free of metal. So there's no sparkles at all in this, and that was kind of shocking to me. Um, you would think there'd be a little bit, especially on this high mileage of an engine, but no sparkles, so we're good there. Now I've gone ahead and I've completely disconnected the heater core lines, got everything disconnected there. I have left the alternator lines here. I don't know what's intact and what's not. I'm not gonna troubleshoot that right now. But you can see there's a lot of stuff gone fittings that are bare, just to clean things up here, to make it easier to not only work on, but get rid of all the stuff I don't need in here. I've gone ahead and I've already removed the exhaust. So it's just straight dumping out of the turbo. And I did find a slight issue here. A Little bit of a hole there on the dipstick. This was rubbing against the exhaust. So if you remember in the previous video, that I did, and I'll put a link up here. Um, when I checked the dipstick, I found way more oil in the engine than the marks. So it was recommended that I should possibly drain some oil out of the oil pan to check to see if there was any water in the system. And that's something that completely, you know, went over my head. I didn't think about that. Um, it was really, really good idea just to check. And there was no water in it. so. I know that it's just the extra oil that came down into the oil pan was more than likely from the lubrifiner and the oil galleries up here in the engine. So I've left all my cooling lines intact. I did top up the radiator, not really that necessary on this because I'm only going to be starting it for a few seconds, getting things moving, checking to see if I have oil pressure and then probably killing it, checking some things real quick and then we can start to get to actually making it run better. So as you can see up here, 
wires dangling everywhere. I've gone ahead and I've cleared out a lot of the mess. I've tried to untangle some of these airlines just to make it easier. There were a million zip ties across this whole thing here. And I went ahead and I cut all of them to get all the lines apart and make it easier to pressure wash. As you can see, it was a lot cleaner, but get better access to everything here. Now I've gone ahead and I've replaced the, the um, compressor intake line, the air intake line, just because it was cracked. And I recommend that everyone else do the same just in case they have an issue with the engine running and they can't shut it down with the fuel pump solenoid, the shutdown solenoid. Um, if this is open, you still have air going in. So you can see here, I've done all the fuel lines up. Now I'm not gonna do a walkthrough on any tubing bending or anything like that. Um, I will in the future, just not on this. I was trying to get it done. But as you can see, they're all swage lock, they're all stainless. So it's a twin ferrule design. Um, I'll explain all that in a future video if you don't understand that. Um, it's very simple, there's nothing complicated with it. But you can see it's all nice and pretty. I'm waiting on some fittings here to do this main fuel line. I will be doing this out of stainless, out of half inch stainless line. If I have flow issues, I'll probably bump it up to five eighths, but that should be more than enough for this. Now, the fuel filter mount or bracket that was on here when I got the truck was only mounted to these two screws. So when I was trying to get the fuel filter off, I completely broke the bracket. Um, so I've got a new bracket. I made a new bracket. I'll put some pictures up here so you can see what it looks like after it was welded and it's off the truck because you can't really see much here. But as you can see in the pictures, there is obviously eighth inch steel here. And then I have some quarter inch gussets hidden behind the fuel filter housing. So you can't see the gussets on the side just to make it look a little bit cleaner. It is more than strong enough. I've stood on this. Uh, and it holds my weight. I'm not that heavy, but you know, it, it holds the weight very well. So I've got some fuel line just run here down into a fuel container because I'm bypassing the tanks currently. I don't want to deal with that and cleaning the tanks out. They're massive. So that's just an added pressure to getting the truck running for the first time. So it's a lot easier to run it out of a completely clean source. So I had to replace this guy here. This guy was completely rotted. Um, this is the after cooler here, and this is the tubing going back down to the water galleries. Had to completely replace that. Um, just basic thing there. And uh, it's definitely not perfect, but it's just a temporary fix. I'd like to do some one inch stainless line all the way down here, and uh, that would look nice and tight. So the next thing that I have worked on is this battery box. And I'm trying to go through this all quickly so that it's not a crazy long video. But you can see here, this is not an original battery box. I actually have the original battery box still, all the bottom pieces and everything. But I wanted to kind of change things up just to make it a little bit more stable. Um, it is carrying a lot of weight and I was starting to see some cracks right here on these side pieces. Um, and I just wanted to make it a little bit better. So obviously I put this access panel here. So it's got lugs. So the battery hooks up to the lugs and then underneath you can see all the wiring. So I did have to completely cut these side panels. These are the original side panels and splice in new angle iron the entire way. And I have quarter inch plate here from old frame rail and then I made my tank mounts so that I can mount my tanks. And I have 3 8 plate here so that it matches the height of this angle iron here. And this allows the batteries to sit in here nice and flat. There's no wonkiness or anything like that. Um, I do have some work on this. That's why it's not bolted in fully. I gotta do some squaring, mainly on this uh, edge right here. And if you look, you can see how it kind of bows out and does this whole thing. So I need to heat this whole box and kind of bend it into place. You can see the hole not lining up down there, maybe hopefully on video, but definitely more work needs to be done on this. Now, underneath the truck, we can see the battery cables. 
So I've gone ahead and instead of running the battery cables over top of the frame rail, I ran them all underneath the frame rail. Now I will be doing some sort of carriage system to keep the wires up and contained so they're not wobbling around and possibly breaking off because that would be bad. Um, but back here, let me grab a flashlight. You can see we've completely redone the wires, got them all, they're all soldered lugs all up to their new home up there. There is a ground run here to the frame rail. Um, I might add another one to the other frame rail just to be extra you know, crazy about it, but I don't think I need it right now. But you can see the disconnect switch is tied to the positive side and then the, the ground is run directly to the starter as that is the more high current side. It is supposed to be one knot on the positive cable um, but I made it too hot all the way around just to be extra about it. And then you can see all these welds. It's completely welded all the way around the seams. That is crazy flickering. But that's simply so that I don't have any rot issues in the f future because of some rust jacking between the battery box and uh, things like that. So let's get back up top. Now this is no finished product by any means. I'm still working on it, but I have something to now actually hold batteries and begin working on the truck. So first battery goes in like so, pretty self-explanatory. Does slide in between the angle iron pieces. Second battery goes in. We're gonna drop a piece of rubber, quarter inch rubber between the two to help eliminate chafing between the batteries. Make sure they're pushed forward. Now we're gonna take our little rubber pieces. These will be glued to this stainless bar or tie down, but as of right now, they are not. Take a piece in here. And there we go. Take your big bolt, thread it down. Just want it snug. And then we're gonna run this guy down. All right, now that I've got the tie down on, and again, I'm not done with this. I want to round some corners, grind the weld out, make it nice and contoured and everything like that. But now that I've got the tie down on, I can start adding my cables. And so we've got our negative side, got our positive. Brand new stainless wing nuts. And then we got our battery cables here that connect to the lugs. So we can attach these guys, run these down, make sure they have good contact here. And this side. Now we're gonna take our nuts and washers and attach this other side. All right, now we push our covers over. Now our batteries are connected. All nice and pretty. Laid out nice and even. Now I do have the lid. I don't have it finished yet, but I'll probably be showing that in a later video. I gotta do some more work on that. But as you can see, Everything's all nice and even height. I made sure the lugs were all even. And then 
that it doesn't touch the lid because that would be kind of bad. But because I have this main disconnect here, I have the ability to easily turn off the power. And because I've gone through and I've already stripped everything that wasn't necessary, and same thing in the dash, I've already made sure everything's disconnected or if it's arcing out, you know, that it's not touching anything, um, just to be extra safe. But the next step in turning this truck on will be doing this guy and then looking for any arcing anywhere, which doesn't sound like there's any, and I've got this guy disconnected. So it should only be getting power to here and then possibly through the gauge cluster if it hasn't been modified. But we don't hear nothing. No fuses popped. I don't smell any candles. Everything seems to be good, good to go. Battery cables aren't heating up. So we're good to go. We can put the key in now that we have no issues here. Now I've done a lot of work already on this, trying to troubleshoot things um, off camera. So this is all correct to this point. Um, so let's hook the key up and see if the starter turns the motor over. Now a few things before I actually put the key in, I just realized I neglected a few things. Um, I did go ahead and replace these rod ends here and I added grease fittings and I also made a new rod here because the other one was stripped. But I have a good working throttle now. It's retracting correctly. Everything is working there. I've, because the copper tube was cut for this guy, I went ahead and removed the copper tube so now that it's just free and open so we won't have any safety issues there with air pressure building and say the governor's frozen. Um, I've also got stop rags over here, if you want to call them that, um, and a board and then a fire extinguisher just in case this does run away. Um, I have completely primed the fuel system to the gear pump up here. My screw is in for the shutoff solenoid. I have backed it completely out. Um, so we should be good to go there. I have 12 volts here. Um, that's just about it really for just getting it going. I am basically primed here. I lost a little bit when I was moving it to this, um, but I have also fed fuel up into the injectors. So it is now time to insert the key or the ignition switch. I did find not the original keys, but the ones the truck used when it was running. It was sitting up here behind the windshield in between the dash, tucked really far down. And uh, I thought that was kind of funny, but let's throw this ignition switch in and uh, we can start to slow down now and actually film the process of starting this old girl. All right, we got the ignition in, main power's on. Buzzer's on. Now we press our button to see if she turns over. All right, that was pretty healthy. So I've already gone ahead and I've turned this motor over multiple, multiple times by hand, just to confirm, obviously the turbo is moving. So that was the, the pre-check if you will. Um, but now we know the motor is moving correctly, at least a quarter of a turn. So now we're gonna start with 10 second to 15 second intervals. So we're not stressing the batteries too much as they are modern batteries. We don't wanna ruin them immediately. Um, but we're gonna see if she'll start. Obviously I got my fuel source, it's already been primed. I don't have any fuel coming to the return, like crazy amounts of return yet. So we shouldn't have too much return, but we're gonna go over, um, I'm gonna move the camera to the turbo side so you can see that side where the exhaust is. And uh, we're gonna try and fire her up. It is in neutral. The parking brakes are deployed. The clutch is free and it's moving. So we're all good to go there. Um, now I can kind of show the more fun stuff. So let's go check that out.
All right. Let's see if hole number nine will fire. We got oil pressure, 40 pounds. So we don't have any electric stop. I had to mechanically shut off the, the fuel pump. Man, that's exciting. I'm shaking a little bit. It's always so thrilling when you, I mean, months of hard work goes into getting it to this point. So we don't have any leaks except for out of that priming plug, which, okay. I need to tighten that up. No leaks out of my fuel line. Let's tighten her up. Let's see if she'll start back over again. All right, we let her sit for a few seconds or a few minutes. So we don't have a proper stop. So I had to turn this guy out. You turn it counterclockwise and uh, it'll stop the engine. So we gotta make sure this is back in. Otherwise, it won't start. There we go, bottomed out. Let's see if she fires over. It's like it's designed to do that. Very responsive. Too. A crazy wobble on a fan or any of the pulleys. The belts are loose, so it's not going to be like crazy pumping water, but. safety glasses. Shut the fuel off. Well, I appreciate it if you watched to this point. I was definitely shaken after the whole thing. It, it, I mean, it's always the most thrilling thing to put months of work into something and then to see it kind, kind of come to fruition a little bit. It's obviously not driving or anything like that, but it's another step in the process to get to that point. So I know I sped through a lot of stuff in this video because I was trying to get to the starting part as fast as I could, as briefly as I could while going over some things. I'm gonna be doing more videos on the fittings, uh, the cable ends and how I soldered them just to help people out. Um, but I wanna talk about other stuff like that in the future, just not in this video. 
So again, a huge, huge step to get to this point and starting this truck finally. I know it's been uh, a couple, a couple more than a couple months. Um, it, it's been a lot of work to get to this point. It's hard to imagine back to it being a car hauler and you know all the, the Stuart frame attached to the back of it and everything. So just looking at it now and how different it is and how much farther ahead it is than when I first got it, it's always a good thing to think back on that kind of stuff and kind of reflect a little bit. But we obviously have a ton, a ton of work to go, uh, especially with the frame the suspension, all the air lines need to be redone. I will be keeping a lot of that stuff original, like I'm gonna be doing copper lines throughout the truck. I wanna return it back to copper lines, take a lot of the flex lines out and do proper bends and everything, and make it look nice and pretty. Because I think that, you know, that kind of stuff has been kind of lost. Even when you look on the $100,000 show trucks and everything, and well, a lot more than $100,000, but you start to look at them and they all got flex lines or you know, the stainless braided line. And it kind of takes away the history of these trucks and how a lot of trucks started, even uh, the older trucks back into the 40s, 30s. You start to look at them, and I say late 40s, but you start to look at them and they got copper lines and it was all very industrial and way overbuilt for what it needed to be. Now, obviously there's been improvements and things have changed through the years, but it's cool to look back on these as time machines and truly appreciate what they were and what people had to go through when they were maintaining them or driving them and stuff like that. So again, we're gonna start troubleshooting some things. I'm not getting coolant into the engine block, so I gotta see if the thermostat's stuck. So a bunch of different things like that. Um, that's for another day. It's just a good day to finally get the truck running. Um, and I'm, I'm just overly ecstatic about it. So if you wanna see more of this truck and then all the other Dodge trucks and everything, please do not forget to subscribe. The subscribing is what makes the world go around here. Um, and I love reading your comments, especially you older guys out there that you know rode in these trucks and actually had experience and millions of miles in these trucks. I, I really enjoy reading what you have to say about these things. And even if you didn't drive an O1000, you know, the ugly duckling of the trucking industry, um, if you drove a Kenworth, or I don't care. It's cool to hear your stories about a lot of these diesel engines and trials and tribulations that you experienced through the years. I really enjoy hearing that stuff from y'all. So again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Still a lot to go on this truck, but we'll get there someday. So y'all have a blessed one and uh, Chrome don't get you home.